Greetings, everybody. Welcome back to the platform, to the podcast, the Stay In True To Yourself City podcast. Um, and today we have a new guest. It's a long time coming. Awesome young man who's ready to change some things in his world. And I don't know if you guys know about that, but he already has. And he has more things coming. So without further ado, I'm going to let him introduce himself. So tell the world who you are, man. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Jacob Engel. Uh, nice 22-year-old, uh, currently in Woodland, California, outside of Sacramento, born and raised. Uh, spent a couple years in Davis doing my undergrad, then was fortunate enough to study uh, out in Havana, Cuba for a summer. And then um, actually where I spent a lot of time with Texas out in D.C. for a summer out there uh, working for a nonprofit. But yeah, you know, I've um, had my hand in a lot of pots, doing everything from running a radio station, having a lot of shows, bringing music uh, to the ears of as many people as I can to, you know, working on campaigns um, with everyone from Senator Harris to uh, Governor Brown currently working on uh, helping somebody establish their political career up in uh, El Dorado County. And so really excited and, you know, doing a lot of things to just uh, bring happiness, bring culture to folks. Uh, and enjoying, you know, living in this California and trying to bring us all together, uh, one conversation, one interaction at a time. And awesome. we're just really excited to be here with you, Tex, and happy to, you know, been following City for a long time and was really excited uh, that you hit me up to come on the show. Can't wait to talk to you here. Yeah, so it's been a long time coming since we did this. Uh... So just to uh, get get it start to get it started off going. Uh, so you did say we uh, we spent some time in D.C. together. That was a good time. We had some good times out there. Um, oh yeah, I have some stories for later, but <laughs> yes, we'll get we'll get into those stories a little bit later. Um, so just as an icebreaker question to get it, to get it started going off. Uh, so if you were to be a vegetable or a fruit, which one would you be? Man. And it's perfect that you uh, said vegetable or fruit, because I think I'd go with the tomato. A lot of contention there on which it is, but I don't know if it's the Sicilian coming out of me or not. But, you know, it's just the base in so many dishes. You can put it um, in everything from, you know, being Italian, having it in almost every dish that we have. Um, It's just so versatile. It's that base. It's that glue uh, that, you know, it's always there. It's all dependable. Uh, that brings you, you know, um, unlocks all these flavors and all of its other ingredients that it's with. Um, and it grows so plentiful and it grows in summer. I don't know. I don't mean to uh, get in all of that astrology things, but just thinking about it now, you know, blooms in July, I'm a cancer. Just realize, you know, as I'm talking it, like it's all lining up now that the tomato might be it. And tomatoes are delicious and they are. Oh, yeah. They're that's it. In, in a lot of foods. Like, I think every time I cook, I have to use tomatoes. So, mm. that's right yeah, no, exactly. It's always there. It's always there. Yeah. yeah I think for me, I'll probably be a, uh, you know, I'm feeling a little bit uh, surfy, low beach kind of vibe. So I would say mm. coconut. Just because okay. I mean, you can eat a coconut and you can also like drink it. So it's like you can get some food and then you can also hydrate. So. It's yeah, gives balance. you a little of everything. Nice. Oh, balance, yeah. It's a good balance. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you, you introduced yourself and you, you know, said things that you've been able to do and the different types of uh, avenues you've uh, put yourself through. Um, what could you say is your biggest accomplishment so far? Yeah, you know, I was thinking about that. Um when we were discussing that earlier and yeah you know I have done you know some pretty cool things on paper thrown music festivals um been able you know in my most recent job I was able to work with a lot of great undergraduates at UC Davis um we were able to you know I helped um flip Wisconsin for President Biden um in the 2020 election uh, but, you know, what I've been, and in the last two years, you know, I really haven't been doing too much during the pandemic, but I think finding inner peace, um, you know, I was kind of a little wild child in college, a um, little, little bit everywhere, partying a little bit, um, and just kind of uh, chaotic. And I think just finally finding some balance and stability in life 
um, over these past two years is, you know, what I'm most personally proud of. I think it changed the way I approach people, changed the way I approach relationships, um, you know, looking for happiness, uh, looking for positivity. And so many times where, you know, in previous years, I was always more of that, that chaotic energy. Uh, I think that's what I'm most proud of in life right now. Uh, it's something that I can take care of, take with me, you know, um, 24-7 when I'm laying in bed. Um, you know, I'm not thinking of, you know, my resume, I'm thinking of, you know, what am I, you know, what's the piece, uh, what am I doing in life and can I live with myself? And that's what I've been most proud of uh, lately. Mm-hmm. You know, that sounds yeah. very, uh, sounds very inspiring. Um, not even like that, man. It's, it just, it's again, when I'm laying in bed, what do I really care about? What's keeping me up at night? Yeah. I'd rather be happy more than anything else. Yeah, inner peace is a very important thing. You know, it's uh, May is Mental Health Awareness Month, so mm, it's something really. that you know a lot of people need to kind of take care of uh, themselves and find that uh, that virtue for yourself. Uh, I'm glad that you actually brought that up because uh, it kind of leads me to kind of want to know. So, in terms of you know, that's your biggest accomplishment and how you find your inner peace. What kind of things do you do to like to get to that point? You know, it's just learning to love yourself. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it, it's just really about how you just look at the world. It's all outlook. Um, you know, obviously, it's about having outlets and a good. I'm fortunate to have a great uh, stability system and my, you know, friends and family. Um, because I think having outlets uh, and ways to channel, I think everybody's going to have angst. Everybody's going to have, you know, um, emotion. Um, and everybody, you know, obviously has very different levels of problems. Um, and so I'm also, you know, very privileged in the sense that, you know, most of my issues were, were surface level um, or, you know, I'm my biggest enemy. So like most of my challenges I created myself. So it's just, you know, finding how do you, you know, treat yourself. And I think that reflects on how you treat others. And at the end of the day, once you start, you know, being a friend to yourself, um you're a friend to, to everybody around you and it just creates you know these positive environments in which um you're just better suited to thrive and that you know um has tangible effects in the workplace you know it makes you more productive it makes you you know more open to new ideas and it makes your creativity um and efficiency just function on these levels that you know i haven't seen uh, in myself uh, before you know, I appreciate you for sharing that. Um, yeah. And this is a perfect platform for to do that because it's a city platform. Exactly. And being true to yourself. It's all about, you know, how do you find that niche and that value and that self-worth that you have um, and kind of guiding yourself on that path because, you know, it's your path to walk. Nobody else is going to walk that path for you. Mm-hmm. I'm glad you shared that. And it's very important to, you know, understand, you know, what you have and what motivates you. And some people, you know, we all have problems and some people's problems might be deep rooted into some really deep things. And some people's problems might just be surface level. Um, And it's uh, you, by hearing you say that, it makes me think about, you know, sometimes I also have those moments where I'm like, Hmm, this is a problem that I have, but I created this problem on my own. Mm. It's how do I think, how do I dig myself out that hole? You know, sometimes we expect somebody else to dig you out the hole and it's like, ha. How do you expect someone to dig you out a hole that you dug yourself? They don't know how to, you know, they don't know where the hole is at. So, you know, you have to kind of, that's where I guess the, uh, the art of articulation, which I think you're very good at, is uh, being able to articulate yourself. So, you know, the person who's next to you has the ability to understand, like, what's going on and how they can actually give you that, that hand of assistance. And it kind of goes all back to, you know, with City is staying in true to yourself you know you're facilitating you know that necessary discussion of how to value yourself but not just yourself but yourself in your community which is something that you actually exemplify you exemplify the high ideals of that so in terms well, thank of thank you yeah oh go ahead yeah um so for yourself um you know you said your biggest accomplishment is finding your inner peace so why do you feel like you are now different from anybody else what, what, what is that thing that makes you feel like okay this is my biggest accomplishment but this is also why I feel different from anybody else oh I mean I think I mean 
I think a lot of people get into that trap, right? And where they realize, maybe their uniqueness uh, differentiates them. I think, I don't know, it's finding those commonalities and kind of now looking for for common bonds instead of trying to stand out in a way like ends up making you look different, right? So like, um, I think that just by being myself, I'm goofy, I ruffle a lot of feathers, um, I dress weird, I'm loud, I cuss, I drink, um you know doing all these things i don't think necessarily i think all of us you know cuss drink uh do all those things but i think just by unapologetically not worrying about um yeah obviously you know now finding in ways we're not worrying about what other people think but then also in myself not judging not judging myself for what i think i have to do or not judging myself for what um you know, like anticipating people are going to be judging you and having these preconceived notions of people. I think it's just created this path for me uh, organically uh, in where, you know, I think I'm just rambling now, but I've just, you know, I've just been doing Jacob shit. That's the only way I can describe it, you know, and it's, it's just made this path where I am kind of that goofy dude standing out there. Um, and yeah, you know, even, even when I'm in a suit and tie, I've been being, you know, serious and, um, doing my thing I think that that comes out just in, in genuine um, searching for for knowledge and common bonds with people that I think separates you know the more um, you know the more more professional uh, more I don't want to say it like that uh, yeah. makes me uh, sound like a hippie but um, you know <laughs> just just you know in ways where I think you're missing out um, in a lot of potential by only focusing on the task at hand and not taking a step back and looking at the bigger picture um, and I think that set me apart in every every place where I've been uh, in life. But, you know, that's why I've always been so drawn to what you're doing uh, over with City. And it's, you know, I've always thought that the biggest, you know, mistake you can make is not walking on your own path and trying to follow somebody else. Because, you know, I've seen that in folks. I've seen how people get lost doing that. Um, and it is, you know, the trailblazing, creating your own path um, that, you know, just creates so much success and happiness and, and community yeah um you know so it's funny that you bring up uh, uh you touching a point that i was thinking about uh i guess the professionalism aspect part um and i feel like there's a sometimes people need to kind of figure out that balance between you know your personal you know goal in terms of how you want to value yourself versus how you want to be valued in the professional world yeah finding those commonalities because the people who you work with might not be the same people who you spend your time with and finding that right balance for you you know sometimes it can be difficult and um that's why it's kind of important sometimes to emphasize those things first to yourself instead of actually telling to other people you gotta be like all right i'm gonna solidify this to myself like this is my this is my goal i'm mm. gonna vocalize it to myself and then when i'm ready to actually act upon it that's my own way of vocalizing it to now society. Um, yeah, yeah, no, and it is that. It's, you know, finding it, realizing how within yourself you want to be perceived. Um, and that goes back into loving yourself and wanting to have those, you know, good images, but also, you know, not forcing yourself to be this to this certain way. But yeah, like you said, you want to be out there. You want to be viewed as in a certain light. Um, and it's that, like you said, it's that inner struggle. It's that tug of war. Um, between ourselves and in society that we we really find ourselves so uh so in terms of uh just i guess you know we, we worked in dc before uh together right so when you were out there you know that's it's a fast-paced environment you know everybody's go 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 24 7 did you feel like you kind of had to sometimes you had to take a step back and focus on yourself first instead of focusing on like what your job was sometimes man dc was weird man i was back in 2018 yeah, i think it was i was 18. yeah it was an 18 yeah so i mean i was 20 years old this young kid and, um i had a job you, you in... couldn't go you cannot go to it you couldn't go anywhere <laughs> yeah but i still drank more than everybody else which that's true <laughs> <laughs> um but 
No, and I think that was kind of so. I had been just hired um, at Katie, the, the radio station at UC Davis, uh, to be the manager. Um, and I was in D.C. working 40 hours a week. So I was, you know, I had bitten off so much more than I could chew at that point. Um, you know, I was just super spread thin. I was working from nine to five then working because, you know, luckily California was back in Pacific time. So I could work until eight o'clock. Um, and that would be until the end of business time in California. So I think I was just so exhausted. And then I was still trying to be social, um, judging myself in terms of, you know, I wanted to be perceived in this light. So if, oh, I wasn't 21, well, I can drink with the big kids. So I was, you know, not treating myself well. Um, definitely, you know, uh, yeah, just not being a friend of myself. And so I think, you know, I was exerting myself on so many fronts, but, um, you know, it took me a year or two to realize that it left me so exhausted um, that, yeah. So back then I didn't realize that. I think now, um, you know, I wish I had that wisdom back then, uh, back when we were in D.C. But, you yeah, know, it I, happens. You learn, you grow. Yeah, same. I, I wish I had the same yeah. type of wisdom, too, back then. Cause I, was, I was young, too. I think I was I had just turned 21. And mm. it was like, well, I'm out here by myself, but I also have a job and I'm also I also have to uh the student ambassador for the program at that same time and I was also I had city at the same time going on yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm also have to sell books too so I had oh I, I remember had, that yeah yeah I had a lot you know I had bitten off more than I could chew um and I remember that we there was a one time when um I think you had just I think it was a Friday night or something and you know Friday nights everybody would like hang out with each other um, but I used to, my Friday nights, I actually used to like stay in and work and like try to do things and just, you know, I guess if I was going to party, I was going to party in, in with my, my housemates. And it was, <laughs> well, it's a favorite memory I have, a favorite mem memory I had of you is um, you were walking back into the building and uh, you couldn't swipe back into the building and you were like just hunched over, like just tired. I'm like, oh God. <laughs> and then you said you had to throw up. <laughs> And then remember that there was a statue. Who was that statue? Right yeah, no, we were sitting together at the um that right statue. on like 16th in Massachusetts, the Northwest yeah. DC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you yacked the most. That was everywhere. A whole river. <laughs> I think we were listening to like old schoolboy Q. Yeah. I think we got our our hands on some weed somehow. Yeah, that oh. was dangerous. We, yeah. we was actually frightened. We, we saw cars coming. We're like, oh my god, what is going on? <laughs> well no and i mean yeah we were young i mean cops were driving by and we were like oh what are we doing and then you didn't realize like oh this is washington dc like they don't care about us like, right a bigger that was, fish to fry out that here. was a good time that was a good time that was a good time that was actually one yeah. of the only that was one of the only friday nights i found myself uh going out the building to like do something i was like oh god it's friday i'm supposed to be in yeah. but I'm out. So I was like, oh, man. <laughs> well, I think one of the very first weekends, I think you came in and I was just like, um, you had told the story. You should tell this one because I don't remember it. But people were telling me in D.C. like, oh, Tex was talking about, oh, Jacob's here. We got locked on a roof together. We got locked on a roof together. And oh. so apparently you were saying something about us freshman year of college. Uh, I don't know. I've, I've yeah, never heard remember, that story. Yeah, it, was, it was we. Uh, I, it's a very, it's a very vague experience actually. But uh, we did get locked in the roof together. You remember, it's a roof by the um uh, in Davis. It's not on campus, but it was on. Um, you had reminded me about this, but I had to remember about it before. Because yeah, I've heard it in bits and bits and pieces, like now and then, but I, I don't remember this one. Yeah, it was it was a it was a very vague night. Just to let you know, but uh, <laughs> we were. It was the roof. You know where the subway is on the on the, at the U Mall. Oh, like yeah, right across from Segundo. Yeah. So there's okay. that. Um, there's that restaurant, Chengdu's restaurant. Oh, okay. And behind that restaurant, there's like a little, there's like a little roof part. It's like stays like this. I don't know. But like I, when I, you can walk up the stairs, or did we? Yeah, like you can walk that? up the stairs and then hop on the roof. Uh, oh okay yeah we got That's stuck up we there did. we got <laughs> stuck up there because the cops came you don't remember that you don't remember that no. Bro, no. I, I was i remember that when the cops came that's the part i remember because <laughs> we i was, just, <laughs> I was frightened <laughs> yeah no that wouldn't have been good 
<laughs> I, we eventually made it out safely. Uh, we were, we were all just plastered. So that was, that was, yeah. I forgot about that. I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> yeah. No, and I mean, those are just, you know, college escapades. You live, you learn. But I mean, yeah, it's, you know, learning, like you said, it's balance. It's, it's learning how to harness those, you know, wild times and, and, um, you know, learning how to just harness that and let it, you know, supplement your, your killer instinct instead of letting it, you know, run amok. Yeah. Always so, been the struggle. Yeah. No, it's, yeah, there's some good times, man. Those some good times. Um, so, I, I, you know, transitioning back to now, you as how you have been able to kind of, you know, walk your own path. Um, do you kind of, understand that essence of your own existence like have you you know finding that purpose I mean, kind of, do you kind of see what your purpose is nah that's part of the journey i'm not rushing it you know that's been been a couple of years they're just not rushing it and and slowly bit by bit learning you know what every what what this is all about um but yeah you know not i don't have anything locked down quite yet you know i'm just personally every day just trying to be you know my best self um, whatever that means, whether it's mentally, physically, spiritually, um, and just keep grinding and keep working. Um, and yeah, so, I mean, until, until we get the answer, it's, uh, we'll fake it till I make it. That's been good stuff. Got me to where I am. And that's, you know, sometimes it's, it's a marathon, you know, it's, it's a marathon, but exactly. there's exactly. something though that I, I don't know if a lot of people think of like this, but there's some things you have to take it as a race. Um, huh. that's, kind of, that's kind of how I view some things. Um, so it's like, I do, I do, I do agree that it's a marathon, but there's just some things you got to be like, I'm going hundred percent right now. And that's it. And this hundred percent is going to get me just a little closer into finishing my marathon. So that's just my own little input intake on it into how okay. I, you know, kind of try to find my own, um, essence of just the only, my own existence. Um, I like that. So like, do you, do you like, how do you put that into practice? Is that like setting goals for yourself or is that like, how do you, how do yeah, you realize that? So for that? example, uh, you know, long-term goals versus short-term goals versus mm. daily versus daily goals and weekly goals and, you know, weekly goals to monthly goals. Okay. Uh, and then, you know, quarterly goals to maybe semi-annual goals, just small things like that. Um, that's what I, I, I mean as in like the race the race yeah. part of the marathon is like there's parts of the marathon where you gotta just take off and put in 110 percent and once you get that you know once you get to that 110 percent you're like all right i got that goal accomplished but i still got more to go but you know this part i'm gonna give some time this part i'm gonna um like for example this is gonna be my example so uh in college we have you know people are supposed to say you go to college for four years uh and and whatnot Mm -hmm. So there was parts of college in my, like my second year where I had already finished everything actually for my major. That was the weirdest part. I had finished everything for my major because I was so focused on accomplishing my major stuff, not knowing I also had to accomplish like the GE stuff, topical breath. Mm, yeah. So I, I, to me, that was the, that was the race part of my marathon was, I'm going to get the most, the, this is my goal. I'm going to finish this first. And then the rest that, you know, complements my goal, I'm going to get that done. And I was actually able to accomplish that in four years. So that was mm. kind of, that's kind of an example of something that I kind of started, had to incorporate is doing that. Um, another thing is uh, I had, so I have four books published now. Mm. I never, like any, all the books that I published, I never rushed them. It was more of me, as soon as I feel like a book is done and I just can't build from it, it's going to be, it's published. But if, if I feel like it's done, but it's not ready to be published, I'm going to start writing the next book. And maybe in the middle of writing the next one, I'm going to publish the previous one. And it turned out mm. to be great just because it allowed me to kind of keep the sequence in the series uh, to keep going. And I can't complain. It's getting me a little closer. Getting it's getting me a little closer to you know to that to that essence of like all right maybe I have found my purpose in this area of life and then 
uh, maybe he doesn't do purpose. I might be trying to touch upon. So it's a good nice. balance. Yeah. Are you still writing? I think I remember you gave me a copy of your, it was the blue cover, like meditations, I think. Or, or something. Yeah, that was the, that was the first ever. That was the first copy. First one. The first okay. one. Yeah, there's three now. I mean, there's four now, actually. Uh, nice. That's great. So, That's phenomenal. Uh, I don't know if I, I think I'm, maybe, I might, I might have another book soon. I don't know. <laughs> Depends. You know, most of my books are, it, it takes a lot of emotional emotional uh what is it called emotional intelligence i have to be emotionally mm. intelligent to be able to put myself as vulnerable as i am because i'm putting my voice and my word on paper for people to read and then people are going to filter those for themselves and like try to figure out what was this guy saying how can i incorporate this to myself and it's like ooh, that's a big task just to to just hear people from the first book asking me about that like what did you mean by this? And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. This is not what I expected because this is what I do when I read books. I'm like, what did this guy yeah. mean by this? So I guess that's a cool part about it, but maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. That's great. Yeah, no, it's a fee. that's a great part of the feature. We get to see what happens. Yeah. It's the best part about it. Oh, so, yeah. Now for you, man, um, <laughs> I know you've been doing a lot of, uh, I know you're very uh, involved in the political world. so uh can you kind of delve into what you have been able to do you said you were able to help kamala harris get up there you were able to flip wisconsin so can, can you kind of delve in into what kind of things are you like good at in terms of that kind of field work yeah so i mean in terms of um yeah field work which is what i was doing um remotely uh, which was really bizarre in the 2016 cycle um, I was a field organizer in suburban Milwaukee um, during the 2020 election. Uh, yeah, during the 2020 cycle. I don't know if I said 2016 a second ago, but so, you know, doing it all remotely, you're calling people, you're making 200 phone calls a day. Um, and we just, you know, got enough people to understand the importance of, of going out to vote. So um, somehow, you know, we had enough folks in Milwaukee to flip um, the whole state of Wisconsin. Um, my precinct alone, I think we had a three point turnaround. Um, it was a pretty liberal area, but you know, we were able to get the votes back that uh, Trump had taken from um, historically Obama voters uh, in that state. So that was really cool, um, trying to figure out how to do that in the pandemic. Um, and yeah, so I mean, I've just as an entry level, you know, campaign wonk, lots and lots of phone calls in my last year. Um, with Reggie Jones Sawyer, a Senate candidate in Southern California, a great progressive advocate, um, and then also some union races. Um, but I think my favorite thing that I've done in politics was working for the Brown administration as an intern, um, actually doing cannabis policy, uh, right when marijuana was legalized uh, on Prop 64 by uh, voters. Um, then the California legislature passed the Adult Use of Marijuana Act. Um, and then the adult use and regulation of marijuana consumption, something act, I don't know, lots of words and all of those, but um, they had to great, you know, um, formulate the initial regulations for retail, uh, delivery, distribution, you know, kind of make it a formal regulated market. Um, and so writing all those regulations, meeting with um, everybody from folks impacted adversely by the war on drugs to, you know, current um, executives from cannabis companies, um, law enforcement officials, all of these stakeholders and crafting these policies um, to create, you know, it's, it's not creating a new market, but it's regulating an $80 billion industry um, being marijuana, but then also, you know, trying to factor in these factors of, all right, well, how do we undo the damage that we've created by um, racist enforcement over the last, you know, 80, 90 years? How do we uh, right some of these wrongs while regulating, while creating economic opportunities? Um, so that was the coolest thing that I ever gotten to do. It was, you know, um, being a pot cop uh, for the Bureau, you're, you know, helping the Bureau of Cannabis Control is really dope stuff, you know, the weed uh, of marijuana policy and, and all that fun stuff. But that was really cool being, you know, 18, 19. Um, and that was fun. But yeah, you know, and then in DC, when I was out there with you, uh, working with the Internet Education Foundation, so hosting a lot of educational panels, uh, working with the Congressional Internet Caucus. Um, and that's, you know, right when 
we were really talking about blockchain, cryptocurrency, um, emerged to um, the ubiquity that it is now. Um, so looking at, you know, how are we going to see these blockchain technologies that uh, are the same backing of, of uh, Bitcoin. And we're going to see that with, you know, possibly voting and possibly like all these, you know, weird new industries that we're going to be relying on sex. So, you know, I've, I've been able to do a lot of, you know, more nerdy policy type areas in politics, uh, a lot of business regulation. But yeah, I was fortunate to intern with Senator Harris uh, before or when she was a senator. Um, so I was able to volunteer and see her in Oakland um, when she announced her presidential bid. I was out there with um, my buddy, Natalie Silver. She's the host of the Pass It Down podcast uh, for all of your listeners. Um, but so I met her up with her in Berkeley um, and we both had our, you know, credentials. And so when Senator Harris was speaking, we kind of, you know, made through the crowd, just flashing our badges um, to make it front row because, you know, we wanted to see Senator Harris front row in action. and. And that was the fun part, you know, that's the more, you know, uh, parade style uh, celebrity part of politics. That was pretty cool um, being so close in a, an election like that. But yeah, you know, like every, every uh, other D.C. intern, you know, you get to meet senators in D.C. And that's always fun, you know, meeting, meeting Bernie, meeting Patrick Leahy, all the fun ones. Yeah. So I've been, you know, it's politics is cool. You're able to, you know, try to benefit other people's lives for the better, figure out all these tough questions put some pieces of the puzzle together. It's been, yeah, politics is always cool. Still, hopefully it'll pay the bills down the road uh, and be able to help people. Don't forget yeah. that part too. Yeah, <laughs> that's the main one. <laughs> that's definitely the main one. But you know, yeah, it's been interesting to, to end up in that as a profession for sure. That's, that's uh, you know, you're part of, history you know that right like you you are a living part of what history is living now for our generations to come that i is... gotta witness it i didn't i mean i was just you know very small part in it but it was cool to witness for sure you know we had marijuana legalized in california and many other states and soon i would say soon mate it's gonna probably be legalized federally too and i'm i'm gonna work i'm gonna help out working on that <laughs> um, super pro super pro on that um you know and you said like you helped out with uh politics and you know helping people out you know it's when i think about stuff like that it makes me realize um those are very monumental parts of history that right now we are living we have a female pre vice president yeah that is fascinating um we now have kind of changed the stigma of marijuana. It's not the, what is it? People usually say the devil's lettuce. Yeah. It, is, it is not a devil's lettuce anymore. It is now somebody, pe pe it's something that people are valued. There's a value to it. And then we have the cryptocurrency market, the blockchain market, which is one thing I believe in. And I've been believing this for a very long time. Um, this is my theory, but I don't, I don't think this theory is correct, but I see so. <laughs> We had the gold standard fallout. That was a long time ago. What we currently have now is going to need something to rely on to help it stay afloat. And mm -hmm. that's kind of what I've been, my theory has been that mark, this crypto market coming up is going to help sustain economies for a very, very long time. Because uh, when you look at the Bitcoin, what is it, 10, 11 years ago? It was a hundred dollars for one, you know, one one Bitcoin. Now it's a safety deposit box for people. That's kind of what it is. Um, you looked at Ethereum, which kind of it's a raw material based kind of thing. You know, it's very important to value these things that are new to the market because, you know, some people say you can't teach a uh, what is it? You can't teach an old dog new tricks. But the old dogs are the ones who are still running the game. But yeah. the new the new kids are the one bringing these tricks, and the old dogs now have to learn these tricks. So very quickly, yeah, and that's what's you know letting the new dogs be able to to, to play right now. It's the backing yeah. on these blockchains. It's it's the investment based you know betting or hedging their bets on it too that gives the freedom to all these uh, and actually democratizes it a little more. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think we're also seeing, you know, I think this is also just a consequence of, you know, us as young people um, emerging and, you know, making our presence felt in the world. And 
you know, letting the older generations understand that these are the things that we're looking at and we value. Um, and, you know, we're starting to, you know, in the race, we're starting to, to make ground on them and, you know, show that we're here. Um, and I think, you know, talking about all those topics we're talking about, you know, we value as a, as a generation, we value, you know, equality and, um, you know, having representativeness and not just, you know, letting one section of the world dominate everything. So we have, you know, behind but President Biden, it actually was what two women behind the president for the first time uh, ever in a speech, you know, when the president's addressing folks since uh, yeah, that's, Speaker Pelosi. That was amazing. Yeah. And so, I mean, we're just making our voices heard. We're letting people know we're here. I mean, we're going to be the ones trying to save the world from global warming. Uh, we're going to be the ones, you know, trying to fix voter suppression. We're trying to keep, you know, oil from uh, robbing us dry. And we're going to try to keep the uh, U.S. dollar afloat when oil, uh, when we do have to wean ourselves from oil. And it's going to be, like you said, these cryptocurrencies that hopefully will keep the U.S. Uh, markets in the game. Yeah, and shit hits the fan because it's gonna hit the fan. It's gonna hit the fan soon. Yeah, I was actually uh, what's there's a there's a new bill I think right now that's uh on the California's floor that they're I think they're trying to pass. I think it's AB. I, I don't know exactly what number I think, but it's AB nine seventy. It's uh the bill on uh, I think making more uh, stations for uh, eco friendly EV. Uh, transmission cars or something like that. Oh yeah, for charging stations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. charging stations. Yes. And I mean, I guess people are having a difficult time trying to wrap their head around that. But in, in the way we have advanced so much, um, it's very important to consider as the rate of technology increases, you know, we have to also consider what other things are going to be, you know, productivity is going to increase. Um, the economy is going to probably want to boom because people are going to be wanting to invest more into the, as technology increases, people want to invest more money. So it's very interesting that we have these current themes going on right now when, and maybe like 40, 30 years ago, people were like so reluctant on their current methods. So like, we're only gonna stay on, on oil, fossil fuel, fossil fuels, but now look what it's doing to the environment. It's causing climate change. And we have new, the new dogs are bringing in this, these new ideas, which are more, which I would say, I'm not, I don't wanna say the way better, but it's more efficient. We're more efficient mm. and we understand we have lived in that era, but now we're in this era of we are trying to be as effective and as efficient as possible without taking advantage of anybody. So that's kind of uh, it's kind of important for us as we just keep on pushing and kind of keep on going to kind of keep that in mind. Um, and you brought up the fact that uh, we have two women standing behind Joe Biden. Like the fact that we can say that. And, <laughs> We, we, you know, both, both you, you and I have been able to kind of be part of that history of making this happen. It's just, to me, it's like, I don't know what's next now, you know? What do you think is going to be next? I mean, one day they're going to, there, there will be a, a not white man, you know, standing where, where Biden is speaking, you know, like that, that's, you know, that's the next logical option is, um, well, obviously just a man in general is, you know, we're going to have a female president one day. Uh, it's gonna happen. Yes, sir. Um, we had Obama, we got Kamala, so now we just need a woman. Right up, I agree on that. Yeah. You know, snaps to that right there. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, it's gonna be interesting. Like the first female Republican or president may be a Republican. It could be Nikki Haley. Like we don't know, but I mean, that's just where we are in a society. Those gradual changes. Um, you know, it took three uh, women's movements for us to get where we're at. Um, and I mean. I mean, it's just, you know, just part of the progress and part of the struggles that we're going to see. Because, uh, yeah, the times are changing for sure. So what a time to be alive. What yeah, a time. It's very true. What a time. Oh, um, yeah. And it's great that Drake said that in 2016, once when all right. of this really started getting lit. Like that, it's funny. It's, you know, everyone makes fun of summer 2016, but that that's when stuff started changing. And that's true. Um so now let, uh, just getting back to uh, now you as a person, you know, you had all this experience and there's things that you've experienced that kind of shaped who you are and kind of have a better understanding to who you are. So if you had three words to describe yourself, what three words would you, would you say? Shit. That's probably one of them. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, damn, three words. I'm never good at that kind of stuff. But, you know, just, um, well, fuck it. I think those are the best three words. It's, well, fuck it, you know? I uh, will make it a phrase. Um, just always down for anything, always willing to just, you know, jump, dive in head first. And, and that's the only way to experience this uh, life is to just go experience it. Um, you know, there's this great motivational speaker, you know, seventh grade, we always have those guys, um, you know, middle school motivational speaker named Layman Hicks. I think I saw him at like the California State Leadership RA, uh, seventh or eighth grade. And, you know, he had this book, you know, wish it. No, I was just like, I don't know. The thesis of the book was just get off your ass and go do it. Um, and I mean, that's always been something that, you know, I've stuck with simple message, but you know, it's one of those, you know, truisms that, you know, you just have to get up and go get it. And that's how it happens. And he did it by, you know, just holding up a $20 bill and saying, who wants it? Who wants it? I looked around, no one was getting it. Everyone was raising their hands. I walked up and walked up to him and he handed it to me and well, that's how I got it. And that's what you do. You know, you have to go for it. Um, so, well, fuck it. Yeah. Not a great three words, but that's what I'm going the, with. My, I guess the way I can paraphrase this is yeah. three words is fucking risk taker. That's it. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you have to bet on yourself. You always have to bet always, on yourself. Always. So I know you've been watching the NBA lately, man. So what, uh, what's your thoughts on this this NBA season? Man, I always want LeBron to win because I want to be able to say, like, well, I was, you know, being part of history. Like, well, we had the GOAT. We had the GOAT. Um, we, we do. There's no – no. I, <laughs> hold on. We do have the GOAT. I don't care. No, we have – we are living in the area. We are the generation that's going to have the greatest basketball player of all time. I said it. I think he's basically. damn good. I think he's damn he good. He's too damn good. Any <laughs> yeah. team he goes on, he is the best player and it's the best team i'll give you that i think if he beats the suns i mean i think you will see them in the finals um oh that's gonna be a tough matchup yep yeah i mean they're up to one we'll see we'll see tomorrow i think in the east i mean i don't think i really don't think anybody else in the west with the you know i don't see anyone else in the west challenging the lakers to win it all i think Nuggets are all right. I mean, they're always great, but they don't have somebody to take them over the top. Um, and yeah, in the East, the Nets are looking amazing. I haven't seen something like that. They look like the Monstars in the first half of Space Jam. Um, but I don't know. I think it would be boring to see a, a Nets Lakers. I don't know about you. It's marquee. It's Hollywood. It would be fun to watch, but yeah, scripted. I'm uh Obviously, I want LeBron to to win it all, yeah. just because you know it's greatest player of all time in my opinion. Uh, but when I look at it, you know we have Portland and Nuggets to go playing against each other, and the Nuggets lineup is not the same lineup from last year. So it's a little kind of like they they're still they're a good team, but I don't know if they're gonna be able to beat the Blazers because they just got beat today. You know they're now it's now a two two series. Oh um, yeah yeah. So that that's it. That's gonna be a weird matchup. It might go to Game Seven. Um, so that's gonna be an interesting matchup. The Lakers and Suns. I have the Lakers winning it at maximum six games. They're about to take them in five games. I see it. I see it coming. Five games okay. is over. Five games is over. Um, and I, this is something that I was like. So the Brooklyn Nets, they're a monster team. Like you know, they people say they have the big three. They have Kyrie, uh, James Harden, and Kevin Durant. But they, they have also everyone. Have, they have Blake Griffin too. That man can ball. Yeah. <laughs> so it's they have like, DeAndre still. They have in they 2011. Have, it would have been the best team ever. That would have been an 80 win. Literally, team. literally. But I still have doubt in that team just because they lost one game to the Celtics. They came. They came into the playoffs just running 2-0 straight up. And then the Celtics just come back. Jason Tatum drops 50 points. If he does, if he drops another 50 points again, yeah, it's a 2-2 series. They're not just going to just walk over the Celtics because the Celtics can play some good defense. They have some really good defense. So I get. I, I would say that that can be a scary kind of turnaround. Um, 
and the Bucks though, the Bucks just swept the Heat, and the Heat went to yeah. the NBA Finals last year. So it proves like, the bubble is nothing though. It, right. It's like they just give them the broomstick and just walk out of here. So that's an interesting. Yeah, and those thing. games weren't close. I mean, oh, I think they, they had one game in overtime, but yeah, the first game. Yeah, but other than that, I mean, it's been, um, yeah, like a lot of the first the first two games on almost every um, lineup seemed to be really close. And then I think we're seeing the gap start to open up a little bit now that uh, we're established in the first round. But it's been yeah. a cool first round. It's it is been, been a cool I, first round. Yeah. What do you think of the play-ins overall? Actually, so it was – so the play-ins, I think they only had the play-ins because they had a – it was a 72-game season, right? Yeah. So it was a seven, I thought the play-in was a good idea, actually, because it allowed the – what is it? The seventh, eighth, and ninth seed to play each other to mm-hmm. see who, I guess, deserves to do that. And I think it was a good idea just because there was 10 games that, you know, they didn't get to play in the regular season. And I guess that's a good way to kind of – I don't think it's something they should keep on doing. Yeah. Um, this, should just, it's, this should just be something like whenever, like, in the 72-game season, this is what the option is you have a plan. But if you have an 82-game season, just have the teams with the best record, the top eight teams in each conference, going to playoffs. And I think that's the best way to do it because this was – this was a, the thing about the uh, this year's plan that I thought was kind of cool was – so – there was this. There was all this talk about the Clippers, uh, I guess, losing a game so that they don't have to face the Lakers, and now they're facing the Mavericks and they're getting <laughs> ass whooped now. And then we had the Lakers and Warriors play in, where you know Steph Curry was on fire like the last end of the season, and people were like, "Oh my God, the Warriors might disappoint the uh, the Lakers." But there was no way the Lakers are not making it to the playoffs. There's no way that was not happening. So that was yeah, no, and that's go ahead. Now, that was just interesting to just see. Yeah, no, that was, I mean, the wildest part of it is it did keep the Warriors out. Um, I think if LeBron wasn't, if LeBron got forced out from the play-in tournament, I think Adam Silver would have reversed, uh, reversed that game of. They said, oh, nope, never mind. We changed it. Top eight teams, Lakers are in. But, yeah, I feel that. I kind of liked it. Like, I wasn't watching the end, like, the last, like, month of the regular season. I mean, so the play-ins, like, kept me engaged a little, you know, pre, pre, uh, pre-postseason. pre um, But, I don't know. Like, I I didn't really care too much about, you know, it made it more competitive at the end of the regular season. Would have been cool if it was live to, you know, be drawn in. But, yeah, yeah I don't know. I'm kind of in favor of the play-ins more uh, in the future. Like, Maybe not every year, like you said, but like if there is a tiebreaker, uh, instead of using stats, like just give it another game. Just give it another game. A little more. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's one, as you can see, I have the Sixers on. (laughs) You know, yeah, this is, I've been picking the Sixers. It's about damn time. The 76ers. Yeah, they have a good team. They have, they've had a good team for the past (laughs) three, four years. Like they've been. The process works. They have been at least top four in their conference, at least. They're number one seed in the in the East this year, so it's like, the, it's about damn time like that team gets it gets a ring. But it's gonna be tough just because uh, they kind of need that. I don't know if they have that experience. They have an experienced coach. Uh, True. So True. it's it's gonna be. Uh, I would if they win the NBA championship and LeBron doesn't get it and they beat you know the Lakers, I would not be mad at all. Just because yeah. Philadelphia could use an NBA championship. <laughs> yeah, they're a prestigious organization. Yeah, they there goes the speaker. Let's see. Lost you there. I just lost the headphone. Uh, I can still hear you though. Can you hear me? Okay, perfect. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good. Perfect. Oh, yeah. So I'm hoping this. I'm hoping that. I'm hoping that works out. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's gonna be. It'll be a fun couple months. Yeah. Um, or a couple more weeks uh, at the end of the season. So who's your final? Who's your final pick to win the NBA Finals? LeBron. You know it's gonna be LeBron. I think we all want it to be LeBron. Yeah, me too. Me too. Oh yeah. So uh, three more questions left for you, man. Um, on the city platform is: Are you a developer or a pursuer? Oh, that's a good one. I'd say pursuer for sure. I think, 
you know, if I take a blank canvas from from the start, like something could come out of it. But I've always been better at, you know, taking something that's there, uh, curating. Um, the reason I went from, you know, create like being a performer, like being in a band in high school to, um, you know, being gravitating towards radio is I always like curating and finding the best things um, in order to improve and um, kind of create from the good that's already there. Um, and I've always, you know, just been better at that than starting from scratch myself. So great question. Um, that really makes you think. But yeah, definitely in that that setting, I'd be a pursuer. Okay. Yeah, you're one of the few people actually that have actually chosen one. Uh, most people usually say they're one or the other. I mean, not one of the other. They're both. But mm. you said I am specifically, it's been a while since I've had somebody just say I'm a pursuer and this is what I am. So. No, yeah, no, no I love the way you phrase it. Like it, it's yeah, for this or that question, I mean, it, it really can make you think for sure. Uh, so, on a scale of one to ten, man, um, how committed are you to stay in true to yourself, city? Ten. It's it's all you can do. I mean, you can be. Yeah, I mean, that's all you can be at the end of the day. Um, you can wear a mask, but you have to take it off eventually. That's, oh, that's a good one. You know, that leads me to the that leads me to the final question, man. So oh. if you were to be quoted on how to stay in true to yourself, what would your quote be? And then you know you have your quote dash Jacob. <laughs> what would your quote be? I mean, I've been saying this um for a long time and I I was you know, I was stoked when you said it earlier, but you know, the biggest this is my my nerdy boy scout self, but um, the biggest mistake you can be is, you know, the mistake you can make is to walk on somebody else's path. Um, you know, following somebody's trail won't get you to where you want to go. Um, and I think that, you know, that's always, um, I think it'll take you far if you just learn by, live by that. Well said, man. Well said. Oh, yeah. Well said. Well, that concludes all the questions I have, man. Um, is there anything else you would like for the world to know for all the young kids out there, all the old folks, all the dogs watching, all the cats listening, anything you want them to know? Man, keep supporting City. Come back, watch the podcast. You know, Tex has always something good brewing. Um, just keep coming back, folks. You know, something good will be here soon. Hey, he said it best. Thank you, that. Thank you for uh, that, man. Appreciate you, man. Um, so it's been a pleasure. Uh, definitely... Definitely, definitely talk some more. But before we end this, we always end this by emphasizing, you know, everything has to start with you. So always pursue your dream. Seize the day. Peace out.